The title of this talk is Smooth Operators for Effective Systematic Review Queries. My name is Harry Sells, and this is work done with my colleagues Ferdinand Schlapp and Martin Potast. Systematic reviews are used extensively in evidence-based medicine. They guide clinical decisions and inform institutional practice and policymaking. They are the gold standard in evidence-based medicine. But creating systematic reviews is really difficult. And that's because there's lots of steps involved in the creation of a systematic review. And these steps form a funnel. The set of documents initially retrieved by a complex Boolean query are continuously refined, starting from about 30 million documents and ending up at around 10. And this refinement process can be very time consuming and expensive. However, most information retrieval research is focused on this study abstract screening phase. Here, documents retrieved by a query are assessed for inclusion in the review. My research is instead focused on the search strategy development phase. The thought is that is if we can improve queries to reduce the number of documents they retrieve, there will be fewer documents to screen overall. But why is there such little research on queries? The main reason is likely because the queries are really complex. Here I visualize the same query as the previous slide hierarchically. Although you can't see the text anymore, the query has been carefully created this way. Furthermore, each keyword can have field restrictions and the searcher can also exploit controlled vocabularies in their queries. All of this makes the formulation of these queries by humans and research into making these queries more effective, very challenging. But Boolean queries are really a necessary part of systematic review creation. They enable reproducibility, so you can use them to double check the screening process to make sure that no studies have been left out. And they provide a level of understandability. And that's so that people, um, the people that actually formulate these queries are often ex expert searchers. So they're able to really control the result set size through the Boolean query to an acceptable amount of studies based on a screening budget. Like those expert searches, I'm sure we all have some intuitive understanding of how Boolean operators work. It's mostly about controlling the result set size. For example, the AND operator restricts documents to those that contain all the query terms. A smooth operator variant allows us to relax this constraint and increase the set of studies that's being retrieved. And as it turns out, this relaxing operation can be applied to other Boolean operators to achieve a similar effect. And I now want to show an intuitive example of why we might want to relax the Boolean operator constraints. So here we have an AND query with three subqueries. And here's our collection of documents containing three documents in total. Document one should definitely be retrieved by the AND query because it's retrieved by all of the subqueries. Document two should definitely not be retrieved by the AND query because it doesn't contain any of the three subqueries. But what about document three? This document is retrieved by two out of the three subqueries. This means that there might be some evidence that this document should be retrieved. So let's go into some details for how we could do this. At a most basic level, we'd like to compute the extent to which a document should belong to a query. And we can model this as the probability of a document given a query. But in the example from a few slides ago, we actually had multiple queries for a single document. And so we'd like to be able to calculate the extent to which all of these queries contribute to this document being retrieved. And when we model it like this, it leaves two estimations, the probability of the document and the probability of a query given a document. So to calculate the probability of a document, can estimate the ratio of queries that retrieve a document. And from the previous example, two out of the three queries retrieved the document. And this means that the probability of that document is two thirds. The second estimation is the probability of a document given a, a, a probability of a query given a document. And we can calculate this as the relevance between a query and a document. We estimate relevance as the relative rank position of the document as retrieved by the query. So coming back to a previous example, 
We now have a smooth version of the AND operator. However, no smoothing has been applied. So it'll retrieve the same set of documents as the Boolean query. But now we can see the extent to which this document, to which document three belongs to queries one and two um, are quite high. So if we kind of fudge some math, let's say that the overall extent to which this document belongs to these three queries is 0 0.95. And so if we smooth the AND operator, we can now retrieve that document. So looking at some results, when we only use the smooth operators for ranking, we can see that it's already considerably better than a BM25 baseline. And we can also see that the smooth operator equivalents retrieve the same set of documents as the Boolean queries. When we take all of the AND operators in a query and smooth them by a fixed amount, we're able to increase the recall at the cost of precision and ranking eff effectiveness. Meanwhile, when we take all of the OR operators in a query and smooth them by a fixed amount instead, we can increase the precision at the cost of recall and ranking effectiveness. We also investigated developing a predictor for predicting how smooth the operator should be. And here we found that, that this struck a middle ground between fixing the AND and the OR smoothing. We also used the ground truth information and found that when we did so, we were able to find more effective queries in terms of recall precision and several ranking metrics. We also finally investigated several neural ranking methods. We found that there were only very marginal differences in ranking effectiveness compared to BM25. Finally, we also compared our results um, from the clay tar task. We found that using neural ranking model, we were able to obtain similar ranking effectiveness while maintaining a very high recall. So to summarize the talk, we found that these smooth operators are able to achieve more effective queries without changing any of the syntactic or semantic aspects of the queries. And although I didn't have time to share it in this presentation, we also performed an extensive evaluation on how these smooth operators work in queries used to, used to search different types of systematic reviews. We also found that there were large differences in how smooth operators should be applied to these different types of queries. And finally, for future work, we found that there's really a lot of research left to reliably predict the smoothness of operators in practice.